guys, I'm back. So, um, today I'm going to be talking about badly focused capacitors. Ooh, I'm all excited. Oh, sorry for the bad focusing. Anyways, um, these are caps. And, um, you know, I'm going to be talking about them, how to use them, some basic app applications, and some more, you know, um, niche applications. Anyways, um, I know I have a video on how to read ceramic caps, and I'm certainly not making a video on how to read electric caps, because right on them, electrolytic, sorry, it says 25 micro or 25 volts, 47 microfarads. The volts thing, though, is uh, slightly more complicated. It's not the voltage the capacitor is meant to run at, it's the maximum voltage the cap capacitor is meant to achieve. And many people that build electronics will tell you that you shouldn't, that uh, the maximum voltage you should take them is the actually half of the voltage. So this is a 50 volt cap. Really, the maximum you should put this is 25 volts, just to be sure, because there is, you know, bad electrolytic caps is a really big problem in the electronics industry. So you don't want to get caught by an exploding cap. And uh, you've seen my uh, my third video in this series ever was a video on um, ex uh, exploding caps. So that should tell you how powerful these things are. You know, not mess with, don't mess with them. Anyway, so there's really several applications that you can use um, for capacitors. The most simple one is if you have a power supply and it's not very well filtered, you know, meaning it's kind of, you know, if you put it on a oscilloscope, it'd look like that, you know, very noisy, and instead you want it to look like that, right? Nice straight line, or pretty straight, probably it would look like that or something, but you know, even more straight than that, you can put a cap to ground. And what the cap does is it charges up, and so when the cap is fully charged, when, uh, say, something, when there's a little dip in the, pa you know, say the power supply does that, right, what the cap will do is it will correct for the dip and just do that. Now, say there's a raise above the power supply. What the cap will do is it will let some of its charge to ground, you know, leak some of the charge to ground and then accept the new charge, so it would end up being a straight line like that as well. So, you know, that's probably the most common application that you're going to find caps used in. You can, you most like uh, time you use electrolytic caps, or these 0.1 microfarad caps, because electrolytic caps are big enough to handle large dips, and uh, the 0.1 microfarads just seems to be really good for the small, smaller range. Uh, sorry for the fan noise in the background. It's being used to cool this really... Um, hot light that I'm using here that's sort of blowing everything around. But it's nice that you can actually see what I'm talking about for once. Anyway, so that's one uh, application you're going to find caps used in. Uh, the second application you're going to find them used in, which is, it happens a lot less unless you're an audio person, is, uh, let me move this up a bit to give myself a bit more paper to work on here. Okay. Is, if you have an audio signal, right, so just some sort of audio signal, right? Uh, oh. Sorry? Some sort of audio signal. Sorry, I have to write sideways. Um, and it's coming in there, right? And say the audio signal has some extra low frequency or extra high frequency that you don't want, right? It's It's got some really super high frequency above the human hearing that you don't want your speakers or you it has some annoying beeping sound or some annoying super low frequency that you don't like maybe you just don't like bass or you don't like treble or something you can take that out with what's called a, uh, uh, a RC filter so the two kinds are like this and like this low pass and high pass filters okay so I forget which one's low pass and which one high pass but um the uh, um, I forget what his name is. Anyway, one of these uh, YouTubers, I'll, I'll put links in the comments, has a really good tutorial on low-pass and high-pass filters, so I won't, uh, you know, maybe later when I've actually read up on what I, I, I could tell you guys about it, but for the moment, I, I really don't know. Uh, I forget which one's low-pass and high-pass, and I don't know the exact uh, formulas that you would have to use. So, you know, I need to do some research on that. But anyway, they can be used for audio filtering. So, you know, you want it to filter out some frequency, low or high. Put a filter on it. And there's your filtered signal coming out there. 
So that's another use you're going to find caps used a lot. You, uh, lo um, much bigger use if you're into audio stuff. Also, you'll find that um, caps can often be used a very similar way to this, but say you have AC, right? You know, an AC signal. An AC signal, right? It's coming in, it's coming in here, right? And you have a cap. The cap will let, caps let AC pass, but DC does not pass. So if you say you had something like an audio signal again, and the audio signal if this is your X, if this is your Y axis, volt. If this is your volts, this is your time, right? Volts and time. Normally, your audio signal would be laid like that, right? With the um, normal being with the no audio at all being on the uh, zero volts. But say your audio had like a um, it was raised by a couple of volts. Caps let. AC pass, but they don't let AC pass. So if you had that audio signal coming in here, you know, if you had this signal coming to here, you could put a cap. Uh, the larger the cap, the higher uh, the lo sorry, the, the larger the cap, the lower the frequency they let pass through. And um, you could put it here, and it would remove the DC offset. So you then had that which is good for speakers. That is bad for speakers, that's good for speakers. So you can use that in many applications too, like I know in uh, CRT TVs that's sometimes used with its signal and stuff like that. Uh, another one that you'll find them commonly used in is if you have a crystal oscillator, like that, you'll find that there's usually two 22 picofarad caps to ground. This is because normally, if you just had the crystal, right, no, no caps, to start oscillating, it, it, it has sometimes has difficulty start os to start oscillating. Most of the time, there's no difficulty, but sometimes there is difficulty, and it won't start oscillating, or it will oscillate at the wrong frequency, and then you have a big problem that is very hard to, you know, diagnose. So these caps, they help it to start oscillating very easily, or much easier than it would be before. So, um, you know, that's that's one you'll finally come uh, then commonly use in, even in such low values, usually about 22 picofarads. So, um, that's really it for these um, cap. Well, actually, there's one more thing. There's ESR, right? So normally you think of a cap just like that, right? There's a cap. But what a cap really is, is it also has a resistor in parallel. You want this resistor to be as low value as possible, because if you have a thousand or say a hundred microfarad cap, right, and you have, you know, the equivalent of a one ohm resistor in series, you can't actually let all that energy go at once. It has to dissipate through the one ohm resistor, right? You're going to lose some of that energy in the one ohm resistor, and it's going to take longer for that energy to be let out. So um, you can buy like low ESR caps when this resistor is pretty much like one, like one millionth or something of an ohm, but you want that resistor to be really low because that lets you dissipate all of your energy without uh, without having to dissipate it over a long amount of time or um, without having to dissipate it uh, without losing any of it. So, um, you know, that's, that's something you should watch out for, that if you need, like, to uh, have a capacitor bank for a power supply that you're going to let all the energy go very quickly, you really want to make sure that these that you have lowest ESR caps, otherwise the caps could heat up or explode, or um, something like that. So that's uh, something else that you should watch out for and know about caps, is that they do have uh, ESR to them. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed learning about caps, you know, um, and all their applications, like with crystal oscillators, power supply filtering, audio filtering, taking the uh, DC offset off audio, and uh, a little bit about the SR of caps, so thanks for watching, bye.